Hey, welcome back to the Sports Fanatic Sportscast, everybody. As we gave you some great NHL coverage to open this one off, as now we're going to give you some NBA coverage with the same realm here. We're going to go secondary off of who we think our MVPs will be, so we'll get to that shortly. But first and foremost, Andrew's our basketball guy on the podcast, the basketball uh, wizard, the woes of our <laughs> podcast, have you. Um, and uh, we're going to give it over to him more to go first. I'll, give the, I'll be the more Michael Barkan of this segment for a Philly fan, um, but who we think are the contenders in the Eastern Conference and the top contenders in the Western Conference or the Weast, if you're Patrick Starr. Um, so uh, that's how we're going to do this here. But Andrew, we'll get started because we know the East for us will be more fun to talk about because it's ours, so save the best for last. Um, we'll go Absolutely. to the Western Conference first, which is very fun this year because of the Lakers' injuries. Um, which is sad. Obviously, you don't want to see Anthony Davis and the Black Jones out as much as they are, but became a lot more interesting because of such. And Utah um, and Phoenix, I mean, <laughs> very good, surprising teams at the top of their divisions. Everyone knew they were good, but one and two, um, that good, that good in conference, 24 and 10 for the Suns, 21 and 9 for the Jazz, um, 26 and 3 at home, 23 and 9 for the Suns. Um, they're doing it good. Um, the Jazz suck in OT, so that's one way you can beat them. They're all three. <laughs> Where um, Phoenix is three and three in OT, but other than that, they've been a good team. As of now, are you still picking because of experience and what they have if they come back healthy? Both of these teams, one of the LA teams, or are you actually leaning towards the lesser experience? Other than uh, Phoenix brought in CP3, Utah brought in Mike Conley, both smart pickups those teams making it and actually being the best contenders in the West. Who are you going for when it comes to the Western Conference? Uh, listen, this is, before I get into that, I'm going to go on a little thing, but I think this is one of the most exciting NBA seasons, if not leading up to the playoffs, we have seen in an extremely long time. Whether you want to blame it on injuries that have impacted some teams, that's fine. But either way, it's still going to be one of the most exciting that's playoffs sports. Over, overall. That's sports. That's just sports, though. Exactly. So I feel like exactly. you can't blame it on injuries. Just look at every lead this year, how many teams got affected and how many teams rose. And the Bruins prevailed through injuries when we did our hockey segment. Um that's the reason we kept them in the cup contention because of prevailing through injuries. So I don't think that is a good excuse like you just pointed out. Yeah, and I think it's – and this is where I'm leaning towards because there are a lot of teams in this West that could make it out if they're clicking right. You mentioned the Jazz. When it comes to playoff team, I'm being a little shaky with them if I'm being honest. When we, same with the Suns. I love Chris Paul. Devin Booker is obviously a lot of fun to watch. Our boy from Villanova, Mikel Bridges, he's fun to watch. We'll see what he's able to do. DeAndre Ayton, obviously. Like, their team is – their team is loaded, and I think this is a good first year progression year for them. I don't know if it's going to be able to last in the playoffs. We'll see. Uh, as me and you were talking about before we got on here, we also got to remember you got the playing uh, tournament this year. It's not the uh, traditional one versus eight, seven versus two, which I kind of like the twist of it, being honest. I, I think it's going to add a lot of fun here, uh, especially with some of these teams, and it's going to add value to the off season and trying to win because you can become better. And it's going to also prevent some teams from tanking as well. And listen, right now in the play, in the playing game, you have the Dallas Mavericks. They're a team I, I'm not going to sleep on if I'm a team in that West. If there's a team I want to avoid from one of those lower numbers, that's the Dallas Mavericks. When you have, a guy, when you have a guy like Luka Doncic and you have the depth they have and uh, Christoph Porzingis, like if, they're, if those two are clicking, you got Jalen Brunson off the bench. You obviously have Josh Richardson, who we know is a very good defender. Like this team is going to be very good. They dealt with some COVID issues early on in the year, which kind of brought their record back a little bit. Without that, you could be looking at this team being a four or five spot. So I'm excited to see where they finish. Uh, as you were going through some records there, they're only a game out of six. We'll see if they can get out of that, uh, or excuse me, half game out of six. We'll see if they're able to get out of that um, playing game. And if they get the sixth spot, they got a first round matchup with the Clippers here. You got to remember. That Mavericks team was beat up last year, and they took that Clippers team to, I think it was six or seven games last year in the playoffs without some of their guys. Yeah, that so was a really good series. If they're fully healthy, I might even pick Dallas to win that. But we'll see where they're, they're able to finish off here and get where they're able to get as high as. But So I'd say in the lower half of the conference, I really like the Mavericks to find a way to get out of there or f find a way to be one of the better teams to upset some teams and maybe make the finals. If we're going traditional-wise, again, they got solid players. I'm a little iffy on some of the guys come playoff time. So I'm going to lean towards, and at this point, who knows how healthy Davis 
uh, Davis and LeBron are going to be. So if I'm going to say my number one team to go out of the West right now, if I had to pick one team, I'm going to lean towards the Clippers and uh, Kawhi and Paul George. I know, again, they've been a little banged up as well. But again, to me, it's kind of hard to pick right now because I'm going on. It's going to all depend on matchups because right now I'd like the Clippers to get past Portland. But again, if they end up getting matched up with Dallas, I can see Dallas beating that team first round. And that's my point about how good – this playoffs is going to be. So I'm excited to watch these play- playoffs. And it's a shame what happened to Denver because Denver would have been one of my favorites if Jamal Murray stayed healthy. Well, you just took the – okay, there we go. You just took the uh, bullet out of my mouth there where I was going to <laughs> say uh, Denver was one of the most fun series to watch. It looked like a final series in the first round of the playoffs last year because of said Jamal Murray. So that was the first round, right, that seven game? series last year it might have been first or second i can't remember yeah but uh that was a really good series that jamal just showed the true player he is and you're absolutely right if he was still in it that would be interesting um since i'm not as big or basketball guy i pay attention to do it but not as much i do like to go more risky with stuff i don't know as much about because <laughs> then i seem even more smart if i actually get it right um so instead of going with the Clippers or the Lakers, because the big thing, the Lakers, I count out even more now, just seeing the Anthony Davis kind of reminding me more and more as time goes on of the KD situation of how the one thing that Max Kellerman has been the most right on his entire existence as a sports broadcaster is the fact that KD should not have played in that postseason. It just like, obviously, we can see now that he was just on death's door of basically having something yeah. occur, where... That seems the same for Davis, just from the vibes you get and the wording it is. When he's come back, he'll be 70% or he'll be yada, yada, yada. He might not be a full 100% you hear from ESPN. If you're the Lakers and you have LeBron, I have more confidence in him coming back, but you're going to have LeBron still. If he's healthy, he's still great, probably until he's 40. You have AD next year. You don't want to destroy your chance to win next year by – not winning this year and putting a guy in that then will be out for all of next year. Where at least if you were the Warriors, you had more cushion on that team. Where you don't have nearly as much cushion on this team, which nobody does than that Warriors team. Uh with with this well except for Brooklyn. Uh with with this team. Um so that's the big thing. I don't think the Lakers are one. I'm gonna go with um the veteran pickup um with the uh I like their veteran pickup, and I really like how Donovan Mitchell is almost reminds me, uh, rest in peace, but just of a guy that just knows straight up how to score like Kobe. I don't know if it would be as good as Kobe, don't get me wrong, but he just knows how to be a pinpoint yeah. scorer as a shooting guard. Um, he's one of the most fun guys to watch from that position. That's the only reason I compared him to him since I've watched Kobe. So that's why I, re- I really like watching Spider out there um, get it done. And I really like that pickup of Conley. He's kind of been called by some the mini Chris Paul because he can play mate well and score a bit, but not nearly to the elite level of Paul, which not most people that exist could do that. Um, So I think they're a team that's a wild card. I'm just going to ride with them as an outside of the box team that I think has a chance to contend because they have the Donovan Mitchell, the stud, the star, and then you mixed in Michael Conley, who does good, and you have the potential uh, defensive player of the year. Um, on that team also in uh, Rudy. So I feel like they got things working for them. Um, it's just going to depend how you were kind of hinting at it, experience, what their experience, if their experience bites them in the butt in the playoffs. But they do have a little bit more experience than people think because they got Bogdan, they got Derek Favors on the team, they got Ilya Sova, and they got Joe Ingles. Those guys are not young in the league. So they do have a no. little bit more experience. And then Conley. So they do have a little bit more experience um, than we think. So I think they're a better team. Clarkson's been one of the better guys, per- surprise performers. Uh, this year, I would say it's 17.5 uh, for him per game from Jordan Clarkson, really giving them valuable minutes. So that's the reason I'll roll with them. They're an outside-of-the-box team. I know that it's probably more likely if the Clippers are healthy with Kwai and uh, Paul George that they'll have a better chance to do it. But remember, Paul George has never – that's been the whole question with him. He's here. Can he get here? <laughs> That's always been his entire career. He's always been a star, but can he help with somebody else to get to the full promised land? So we'll see if that's the case from Paul George uh, when it comes to this postseason or if uh, 
Utah, who I picked, will be able to make it. Now, if you're a betting person, I would go with Andrew's pick because he knows more about basketball. If you're somebody that likes taking risks, tell your friends that the Jazz are going to go to the championship, and then you'll look like a genius if it happens, just like I hope to um, by the time well, at the NBA championship. Well, in that case, maybe we should go with, go with yours because you, your team probably might have better odds. So, so you want to make a few extra bucks then. <laughs> it depends yeah, well, on if, yeah, that's true. Sure yeah. Yeah, yeah, if they have – it depends <laughs> if they rank it off of the division or if they actually rank it off of um, – instead of standings, actually roster structure and where they think he's – Bro. Actually, right for this, since we were just talking about it, how funny is this? The Clippers and the Jazz have the same odds. They're both plus 700. So, you know what? <laughs> you can pick whichever one you want. Yeah, so pick whatever team you want then. Yeah, there you go. Lakers Lakers do have the uh, best at plus 350 still. So, obviously, depending on their health, which they're expecting to happen, uh, that's the case there. Odds makers are weird, though, because they did the same thing with KD. And then look what happened to KD. Yeah. Like they like they you have reports from everybody saying he's not fully healthy, not fully healthy, and all of a sudden Vegas is like, rack up the dollars, boys. He's fully healthy. It's like who said that? <laughs> Where did that come from? Like like sometimes it's just like I I don't know why odd makers don't change stuff. It's just dumbfounding how they keep stuff the same sometimes. But yeah, if it does happen, then I can see. Uh, L.A. being in first, just because I don't see Davis being healthy, I don't necessarily see that being the case, but, but we'll see what happens. I think it's more your team you pick, or potentially that surprise team in the Jazz or the Suns that we aforementioned as well, who picked up a nice veteran guard, a very nice one, a Hall of Famer in Chris Paul. So um, that helped them there. Go ahead. So I will want to say, since it is new, I kind of want to run through what how the play-in style thing works this year for those who might not know. Um, obviously, we're used to one through eight making it, so this year what you're going to have is Whoever the 7 and 8 are are going to face each other, and then whoever the 9 and 10 are are going to face each other. The, the benefit of being the 7th and 8th in the traditional playoff spot, you're allowed to lose twice, while the 9 10 can only lose once. That is the difference. I don't know if you were aware of that or any of the listeners, but I, I actually a big do not difference know there. that part of it. So, what, what happens is the, seven, the winner of the 7 8 game is going to go face, or is going to be the 7 seed and face the 2 seed. If you lose that seven eight game, you're gonna to get to face another game. You're gonna go face the winner of the nine ten game, and then the winner of the nine ten against the loser of the seven eight will go face the eight seed there, and then the loser of that will be knocked out. So okay. that is the benefit of being in the top eight slightly. Obviously, you still gotta win your game, but you're gonna to have to win or you get to lose twice rather than once, like some of those yeah. other teams. Because if you run it and you're the eight seed like Memphis. And obviously, I don't know who you'd pick. My favorite would be Dallas over Memphis in that game. And you're going to have Memphis against the Warriors in that second game. That's not that's not really beneficial to Memphis. I mean, no, anybody facing Curry is not really in a beneficial situation. But that's assuming, obviously, the Warriors get past. Well, first of all, if, if um, what's his name, which I don't think they're going to. Yeah, the Spurs are a weird team. They have guys that still get it done. But, yeah, I don't think they're beat. Golden State because Curry, if he can score a lot, they don't have anybody to match that. Um, the Grizzlies, I agree with you. You got Luca, Porzingis, like we said, is Porzingis the old Porzingis? No, but we've seen strange things happen in the postseason where guys all of a sudden go back to all of a sudden being what they once were. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I do agree with you. Out of the seven through ten, they're definitely the biggest surprise team. And I would agree with you. I would take if we went with the seven to eight matchup, Dallas over Memphis and probably Golden State over uh, San Jose. I will say Memphis has one of my favorite players to watch. If you're looking for a guy to go watch, go watch John Morant. John I love Morant. watching that guy play. Yeah, another good guard. That's really fun to watch. But no. Uh, yeah, so again, my favorite oh, guy that got screwed out of the playoffs last year with the return to play strategy, but we won't get into that, Adam Silver. Right? Yeah, no, that's a mess. Um, yeah, and again, my favorite out of the West, I think I'd have to lean towards the Clippers. Uh, but again, don't sleep on the Dallas Mavericks because I think if they click and they can sneak up to about that five or six spot by a regular season end, uh, you could be looking at the Mavericks pulling off some upsets, especially if they get matched up with Denver at some point, depending on how things shake up. Obviously, I think with Murray being out, I'd take Dallas over a Denver-type series. Okay. Well, for this episode, since with the NHL, we did the two conferences and then one MVP, since the most fun thing is going to be the East uh, Conference for Andrew and I talked about, we'll go MVP seconds should lead us into it, since the top two favorites right now are two centers, um, according to uh, Vegas Insider which is Nikola Jokic of Denver and the Sixers' very own Joel Embiid and then Steph Curry because he just doesn't stop missing 
um, is ranked third to Giannis, only according to this, at a plus 1,700 to a plus 2,000 um, for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, so you have a plus 340 for Joel, ranked second, to Nikola Jokic, currently ranked first. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to say your non bias <laughs> opinion on this one. Um, Jokic, I'm trying to see the game since I know Joel obviously has sat a little bit. Jokic has played 58 games, um, averages 26.4 points per game, 11 rebounds, and 8.7 assists. Where if you look at Joel and Bede compared to the 58 games of Jokic, he has played 40 games, 30 points, 11.3 rebounds, and 3.2 assists. So I would have to envision that odds are because he's played a good handful of more games. I don't know if you would agree with that or not. I, I think this was going to come down to. I really do. Listen, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm a diehard Sixers fan and always will be. But when you're comparing these two guys, I think uh, – I, mean, I, I would love for him to beat the win, but I think his the amount of games he's had is going to hurt him. And, and, I mean, you have a center who's averaging – I mean, we can get into the points and obviously the, the rebounds and all that, and we know what they can do. But then you turn to another stat, and you look at assists, and you got this guy averaging 8.7 assists per game as a center with those Denver Nuggets. And I think that's obviously a scary thing to see. I'm kind of interested with Murray being out. Is Are these numbers going to drop a little bit? Like, with less uh, less opportunities there? We'll see. True. But they um, also yeah. might have a chance to do the reversal, though, because we've seen guys on that point when someone goes out, even take a bigger step forward. So, yeah, he could because he doesn't have a setup man. Like, Murray would yeah. take the draw away, set him up a little bit. But if he takes it more upon himself, we've seen Jokic do that in the past. Well, he I agree in the sense that I think he's going to go forward. score more. So, I think his points per game is going to go up, but his assists are going to drop a little bit. Oh, okay. That's what I was trying to say. That makes sense. Okay. Um, so, but no, I think – I think you're asking me who the best player of, of the league was this year. I think it's Joel Embiid. Like, top to bottom, I think he's the best guy. I think he's he's put up the best for teams. He's putting us in positions to win. We obviously have a better record. Uh, I mean, not by a lot, but we have a better record than Denver. Uh, but I think um, final point on, this, on the, these two would be is I think Joel Embiid's game's absence. And, and I think that the, the – Games they rest him, quote unquote, isn't what's going to hurt him. I think it was the physical two, three weeks he missed in the season that really hurt him in the sense of that. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see how it finishes out though. If the Sixers end up winning the one seed, Denver drops down to the six or seven or five, depending on obviously whatever happens, uh, how they play without Murray. And we'll see how how it shakes up. But I have to lean. I have to lean with the Joker. I think just because uh, of the games played, and I think that's the way. The NBA is going to lean as well, and I think they released their NBA MVP ladder, whatever they call it, a few days ago, and and uh, the Joker was atop it. So I think I think that's the way they're going to lean a little bit. Again, my personal belief, Embiid had the best year, but because of those games missed, uh, Jogic's going to win. Yeah, I think the Joker, Nikola Jokic, I think he will win. Um, he has the more handful of games there. Um, he's had a ridiculous output. Joe has the more points, but they're going to say that's because he had 40 games compared to 58. 18 games can bring your point total down to 26.4 compared to 30. Um, and he has 11 rebounds and 8.7 assists. I do agree. I uh, misunderstood you for time. I do agree his assist numbers without having Jamal out there probably will go down. In terms of him being the alpha, that definitely will likely go up, which might be able to cement himself into the MVP race even more, where we still have Ben Simmons in Philly. He's not injured. So the MB doesn't have when he's in um, to take over completely if you have other guys step up or others on the roster like Tobias step up in that particular game uh, for the Sixers, who's been very good this year, but step up in like the like 35 percentile scoring. I mean, like having going off for a particular game. So he has more help there. I feel like sometimes when you lose help, that can even benefit you when you're already in the favorite to win the MVP. It's not going to benefit your team as a whole, but just an individual to cement the MVP because he'll get the ball even more. Um, but, yeah, I agree with you. I think it's going to go Joker simply because of the games played, and then Joe Embiid will be in a close second. 
But as we wrap up our NBA talk in our final um, 10 minutes here of doing the NBA for you on this edition of the Sports Fan News, we did some great NHL coverage for you and some great NBA coverage. We really appreciate you joining. Please like, comment, and subscribe. As always, and let us know what you want in some future videos or some game ideas too. We're always welcome to do some cool trivia or game type things for the future. So let us know. But we're now getting into the Eastern Conference. And I feel like we might throw a third team into this docket, but I feel like it might be more of a two-team thing here. Um, we have the Eastern Conference between the Sixers, Nets, and surprisingly, um, I don't think anyone would have guessed who the fourth-place team is um, right now. Uh, the New York Knickerbockers um, are in fourth place. That actually Joyce Randall. used to be their full name for people that uh, – I'm pretty sure, by, by the way, back in the day, for people that don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but – uh, the the Bucks are in a uh, third place. Um, they're three and a half out, twenty and ten in conference. Um, nine and zero in the division, though in their own division. Um, it says, and then eighteen and ten at home, seventeen and twelve on the road. Brooklyn's in second, only a half game out of the Sixers. Twenty and fourteen in conference, six and four in division, twenty three and seven at home, and sixteen and thirteen on the road. Where the Sixers just beat them on the road at seventeen and twelve, twenty two and seven at home. So basically the same. Uh, ten and two in division, and then twenty five and seven. They beat them in the conference, um, so they would have the tiebreaker looking at those numbers, unless if they just suck against Brooklyn game for game wise. Um, <laughs> to round out, did we play? How many times did we played Brooklyn again? It's a good question. Maybe once. Uh, no, no, yeah. we we don't play them again this year because when oh, we beat done. him when we're we beat done. him last time, that sealed the deal for us to win the tiebreaker. Oh, okay, perfect. That's, okay, well, then that's why that game was so big and why I was so surprised and they rested everybody because that game was huge. I mean, that was almost a playoff game for these two teams. Yeah, okay, that makes sense then. Okay, then the Sixers already have the tiebreaker, so we don't even have to worry about that if they go even. So, therefore, again, this is going to have to be your unbiased opinion. Um, <laughs> who do you think is the favorite, the KD, James Harden, um, Kyrie, and every other person that's on that team um, led Brooklyn Nets? Or uh, Simmons, Joel, and Tobias um, led uh, Philadelphia 76ers out of the Eastern Conference. Unless if you want to throw Milwaukee in there, too. You got Giannis' bucks um, when it comes to the Eastern Conference for the championship. I think that, listen, the, the number one seed is going to be huge for the Sixers or Nets. I guess you're going to throw the Bucks in there three and a half back. We'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, that's a long shot, but we'll see. Uh, I think the reason why the number one, number two spot is going to be so big for these two teams is because the difference of number one, number two, you don't have to face the Bucks because the Bucks are obviously a really good team. They're always going to be a, a, a contender to get out of the conference. So if you don't have to worry about playing a seven-game series with that Bucks team, and whoever it is, the Nets or the Sixers, whoever get matched up with them, I think it's going at least six or seven. So you don't have to, you don't have to get the wear and tear against a tough team like that. So I think that's going to be huge for whoever gets the number one seed is you get to avoid that in your second-round matchup. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I think you'll agree with me that the teams I'm about to list are a lot easier than the Bucks. Your second-round matchup is going to be the Knicks or the Hawks. So obviously you pick your poison, but I'm going to take the Knicks and Hawks rather than the Bucks. Um, but I, I think I'm going to lead the Sixers. I think they have the best chance, and I think the main reason I have to go with uh, – and I'm, if they were healthy, I'm not saying the Sixers can't win. But I think the main reason is you don't know what you're going to get at Durant. You don't know what you're going to get at Hart now at this point. They've missed so much time. We saw Durant come back for two games, and he re-aggravated his groin. So now he's out again. So like, we don't we don't know where this Nets team is going to go. We obviously, best wishes. I hope he, he's okay. And obviously, I don't blame him. But you see LaMarcus Aldridge retire. So they lose another mm -hmm. big guy on, on that team. And again, uh, prayers out to him. I hope everything's okay with him. Obviously, dealing with what he had when when he showed us on social media. But that was his heart. Right? Yeah, he had the he's yeah, the having issues with his heart, yeah. a little heart condition. So we'll see what happens with him. Obviously, and um, hey, even we've seen Blake Griffin get hurt in the past. So it's all going to come down to their health. I, I do like, and I get it. Six are the same way, but Simmons is only missing time because of an illness. He'll be fine by playoffs. Harris will be is fine. And Bede obviously missed his two weeks already, and now he's back playing back to back nights. Uh, so I, I like the Sixers' chances uh, to get out of the East, especially if they hold up that number one seed. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's pivotal to hold up that number one seed. You don't want to have to face Brooklyn um, when it comes to those teams. I do think the Sixers 
due to the issues of the regarding Kevin Durant and also, like you said, um, well wishes to LaMarcus Aldridge having to retire early on. Jordan's obviously a good defender. You have some good guys. You saw James Harden and Kyrie Irving, so you have nothing to sneeze about, even if KD's not fully healthy. Um, but And you have Blake, which, again, guys sometimes show up more in the playoffs than they have in recency. So um, they're a very hard team to reckon with. It's more... Um, I still think coming from it, uh, Joe MB, if he played more games, like we said earlier, probably would have been the MVP over mm-hmm. Joker. Joker's probably going to be it because of the games played. I think Joe will step up more in the playoffs. The pivotal key here is, like you said, hell. Uh, what screwed us in last year's postseason is we only had him <laughs> at a certain point. I mean, we had Toby, but but I mean, like your your team doesn't work Not the this same. Year, Toby. Yeah, yeah, you didn't have this year's Toby, and your team doesn't work the same when you don't have the guy that runs the offense in, even if you still have two other good people in. So that's a big thing for the Sixers, but I still think they'll be able to get there out of the East. I do want to see George Hill a little bit more, see how he continues to run the offense, because that's the one question I obviously have, who off of the bench is going to run the offense the best when Wade, or not Wade Simmons, uh, Ben Simmons <laughs> is hot in, in the game. Um, I do a lot of different all sports coverage, and I will, I will say I think that's partially why you're not seeing them rush Simmons back, is because they do with George Hill come back. You do need to see what he's able to add to this team and what he's able to how he's going to be able to run their offense. Do you would you rather George bring up the ball and have Shake uh, be the outside wing guy? Do you want? Uh, I mean, because uh, if you have a, a lineup of Cork, Miles Hill, and, and Milton, you're going to be looking at two good wing shooters there and have Hill bring up the ball with Howard down low for the big guy there and. Uh, High interchange Simmons and Harrison went at like the four like that. So I think uh, no, I, I'm excited. I think this is a deep team too, and uh, I think maybe we didn't get the biggest names at the deadline like we wanted in that sense. But I think this team is still re- relatively deep and we able to go a long way come playoff time. Now I'm excited. I, I think Sixers fans uh, should be the most excited they've been in a very long time because I mean, obviously that Raptors series was fun, but I, I think this team top to bottom could. Uh, could be better than that team, to be honest, just because of the depth you have. Like, if we would have had this kind of depth in, in that series, we would have been able to contend and win that series more. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, this team, unless if you're Mike Scott, and uh, yes, I named the podcast after you when we started the podcast, but you're obsolete at this point. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, unless if you're him, um, there has been stuff coming off of the bench. You're right. Um, hopefully that continues. I think the Sixers are the best contender. Uh, we thank you for all joining for part two, our NBA segment of the Sports Fanatic Sportscast here. As we thank you all for joining. Uh, part three we'll do on the NFLs. We're going to the mock draft, and then we'll cap off with Andrew and I's favorite sport, baseball. We thank you all for joining. We'll be right back with some great NFL talk. <laughs> 